So just to refresh so everybody knows, so we're here with Jay Horgan uh, with mm-hmm. Houston Diamond Outlet. Um, you are the owner, owner. you are owner, okay, <clears throat> owner operator of uh, Houston Diamond Outlet. That's right. Um, your website, HoustonDiamondOutlet.com. That's correct. Correct, okay. Um, so, Jay, welcome. Thanks, yeah, thanks for man. having me. Yeah, not a, yeah we're, we're excited to do this. Um, for those that don't know, I'm Grant. This is uh, Jay Money, Johnny. What's happening? And then uh, behind the ones and twos, we got Hector, the Spanglish gangster back there. We'll get you a microphone. Hector, yeah, don't worry. who doesn't have a mic. So <laughs> um, so to start it off, Jay, I've already introduced you, but Jay Horgan, kind of give us a little bit about uh, your qualifications in the business, like what you uh, – what gets you like what's what comes to diamonds when it comes to you like what's your uh, what's your history on that what's my history yeah. <clears throat> well, I started uh, 26 years ago my wife and I had our uh, opened up our own shop and it's funny it uh, was about a you know eight by eight booth in the diamond district of uh, downtown Los Angeles and uh, we really didn't have much uh, so what we would do is uh, we had some merchandise on consignment so when customers will come we didn't have much to show, so one of us would get out of the booth, run around, try to find it, bring it back, and then we'd sell it, and then pay whoever we we got it from. And uh, with that profit, we would make another ring, or may, potentially part of another ring, until you know we built it up and uh, the showcase was full, and uh, you know expanded and went from there. So it was a uh, uh, you know business concept, not so much just. You know, get in there and do it and make it happen. Yeah. So you've been doing it, you said how many years? 26 years. 26 years. How long here in Houston? Uh, 12 years here in Houston. Okay. Right. What brought you here to Houston? The the economy in California was going down. I mean, we were doing trade shows. We did wholesale retail shows all over the country. Mm -hmm. Uh, But the business in downtown L.A. was going down. So I asked uh, several people. And all the realtors were telling me there's two places in the country that that uh, the housing market hasn't crashed. One of them is <laughs> Sugarland, Texas, yeah. and the other one is I don't remember because now I'm here in Sugarland, Texas. <laughs> all right. Okay. Good. All right. Well, um, again, just just give us a little bit of a background on on your business, uh, Houston Diamond Outlet, which y'all do. Okay. So we have uh, we have factories. We manufacture. We have our setters, our designers. So a lot of the stuff in the showcase uh, we produce. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, we have our own loose diamond inventory. So basically the process works as you come in, you have an idea of the ring you like. We have probably 700 rings in the showcase mm-hmm. to choose from. If you mm-hmm. choose a ring, then we can go on to choosing the diamond. And the diamond, I'll show you several different stones, <clears throat> tell you a little bit about what the differences are and why one is more expensive than the other. and then. Of course, uh, you make your own decision, and then like we did with Johnny, we put it together. Mm-hmm. So we have a setter there, does all the sizing, the uh, uh, setting, things like that. So it's all done there in-house. Okay. And what we're going to do later on is we're going to get into a little bit more about that process and how that comes as far as the cutting and the choosing and the difference between you and, and somebody else. You know, So we're, we're going to get into all that, but I just want to kind of give a background of exactly what Houston Diamond Outlet is and uh, and what you guys do. Um, so that's that's what we wanted to start off with, just to give okay. a background so people know who you are. So um, what we want to do is we're going to break it down in segments here. First goal would be to n- next go into um, kind of just a history of the business, you know, just a history of diamonds. Like Johnny said, I mean, Johnny's kind of like me. I don't really know a lot about diamonds either. Like I – zero. Like, I mean, I, I don't even think I know – point a half a percent like i I just don't know anything about it so um you don't know half a carrot there you go yeah i don't know (laughs) half a carrot absolutely so and carrot you know it's like getting that kind of stuff because like i said i just i just don't know anybody so um i guess just for the lay person like me like what is a his like just kind of give me a history of diamonds like what makes diamonds so special like what is it why is a diamond a girl's best friend like what what is it about that what is it about a diamond that makes it a diamond. Like, what is it about it that makes Why it so special? Why is it special? so expensive? Yeah. Why is it so expensive? Well, number one. Well, it's expensive, but I mean special. You know, like just diamonds, besides the fact that they look pretty, I mean, they look good, but I mean, like what's, I, I'm just, I, I try to get the allure of diamonds. I don't understand it. Okay, well, uh, won't get into the how actual diamond is formed uh, under, 
uh, under the earth over right. a billion years ago. Right. But uh, did you know over the time that I've been studying diamonds, I went to school. Uh, uh, learn how to grade diamonds at GIA and, and things like that. Mm -hmm. So a very basic understanding is uh, a couple hundred years before Christ, I mean, uh, the Indians were finding the stuff in the ground and it was shiny. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's one of the things that still attracts us to it. Sure. Now, of course, they didn't have the ability to cut it and form it into what we consider a diamond today. Right. But one of the things that they noticed is it was extremely hard and unbreakable. Okay. So that was something that was, you know, very unique. They couldn't break this thing, this shiny thing. It was my understanding that they they would take the diamond and put it in a vessel filled with water, and if you went like this, you know, just stirred it around a little bit, it would scratch the inside of the the glass vessel. Wow. Okay. And that that was unique. You know, other gems wouldn't wouldn't necessarily do that. Now. That was my understanding of when I went to school 20 something years ago. Mm -hmm. But from then on, it's always been uh, something that the, the uh, people in power, the rulers, mm -hmm. would want to obtain these diamonds mm -hmm. to have. And of course, back then, they weren't fashioned the, the way they are now. Uh, so it's always been that thing about the shininess and the unbreakability of the of the stone that uh, made it more unique than any of the other gemstones that were, of course, much softer and breakable and things like that. Okay. So, because I, I didn't, I mean, you know about diamonds being hard, but I didn't know that they're they unbreakable. I mean, you, you can't break a diamond, basically? Well, back then, they, they called it... That's what they called it. Okay. Is that unbreakable? No, it's of course it's breakable. Okay. The diamond, diamond is formed in eight planes, much like a uh, a piece of wood. Okay. So if you take a two by four, and you have it standing straight up, the plane goes like this in the in the two by four. So if I go hit it this way with an axe, it'll split right down the center, real easy. If I go this way, not so much. Okay. So the diamond's got eight planes in it so it can be cleaved in eight different directions oh, okay but it's not not like something you hit it with a blunt object that's going to break i got you okay all right so what are the different segments of the diamond business like w when you when you break it down i mean to me i just know a jewelry store i mean that's basically all i know well first of all you have the beers mm -hmm. which uh buys the rough diamond out of the ground mm-hmm they bring it back to London and they have what's called the site where they invite um, huge companies that have passed uh, certain tests and, and qualifications to mm -hmm. become what's called as a site holder. Okay. Okay. So they, the beers buys the rough, they sell the rough to the site holders. The site holders then either cut the, cut the stones mm -hmm. or they sell the rough to a secondary market and then you have other cutters. Okay. So from there, you have people like myself that buy from the cutters and obviously you have to buy in such a quantity where it's gonna make, make it worth their while. Right. Um, and then dealers like myself will sell to smaller individual stores and things like that and over the years you know since the internet uh, came around mm -hmm. now instead of me selling to someone that's going to sell potentially could be two or three brokers before it hits the end the uh, end buyer now it's basically the beer site holder me consumer okay all right so you're selling so you're not only selling to an individual you're selling to stores and and things like that that's what you're doing we too? had been in the past okay. uh, not so much anymore because I, I the profit isn't there okay. it doesn't make sense okay and uh, I prefer to get paid right away <laughs> okay okay I'm with you all right then following around trying to collect my money yeah so, so all the stores are on consignment when you go through the stores yeah, or they'll they'll sell something and don't pay me for 30, 60, 90 days, and it's an argument back and forth. I'm with gotcha. You. Okay. So what's the difference between wholesale and retail stores, just like it is in any kind of business, wholesale and retail? Yeah, pretty much. <clears throat> I thought about this a little bit. What uh, uh, myself as a wholesaler seller is I can buy in such quantity that I am able to sell to the public at or below the price it would cost me to buy that one stone in the market. Okay. So that that's basically my definition of what a wholesaler is. If I try to buy one stone in the in the diamond market, let's say it will cost me 
10 bucks. Mm -hmm. Well, if I'm buying a whole bunch of stones and I could buy it for seven, I could potentially sell it for nine, mm -hmm. which is less than what it would cost me to buy that one stone. I got gotcha. you. Okay. Basically buying in bulk so that you get a price reduction in it. Right. Basically. And which in the past has allowed you to be able to sell them to the stores direct if you wanted to, because you're right. buying in such bulk that those stores or kiosks or whoever can't necessarily buy in that much quantity. So they're coming to you as kind of a middleman because you're the one investing in all the quantity. Therefore the stores buy directly from you and clients like myself buy directly from you at the same price that the stores buy from you. Exactly. And that's why you're more cost effective than the stores. Now I might go to a store and see a stone, let's call it a one carat stone. And you have the same, I won't call it the same, but you have a one carat stone too. Uh, but yours is, uh, the same price, but it's a lot better quality than what the store is selling. Yeah, that's correct. Pretty much what you're going to find at a retail store, I'm talking a mall store, stuff like that, is pretty low end quality because they're trying to compete price wise. And, you know, that's what I've noticed. Right. It's my, my job when you come in, I'll show you what the difference is. And if you go like, like to go back and take a look at Zales well, or Jared's, now when you go back you go you know what oh to look God. for yeah you know what to well and you gave me the option when i was there to buy what they would typically sell there with all of the imperfections in it right you always what, what is the option. proper word for imperfection Inclusions? inclusions inclusions or imperfections yeah okay so it's not as clean a cut at a retail store like that is what you're saying not the cut the natural imperfections the you know the black carbon specs is most people are familiar with or okay. the, the cracks or the the other imperfections in the stone which are, are natural in the diamond mm -hmm. very hard to find a stone that doesn't have any imperfections so you know we, we like to have a balance where you get a good looking stone mm -hmm. got some imperfections or inclusions but it's not something that's going to be obvious or noticeable to someone looking at it okay. and that way you can get a very good value so tell me what then what the difference would be between a real diamond and cubic zirconium Okay, well, cubic zirconia is basically plastic. Okay. Okay, so something like this um, gets worn and gets scratched. So it's basically disposable. You, you wear it, you know, half a dozen times, it's gonna get all scratched up, it's gonna look like junk, and which it basically is. Okay. And then you throw it away. Okay. Uh, diamond never scratches, or I don't say never, or, or it's the hardest substance uh, that we know of. So it doesn't scratch, it wears very well, and you could wear a diamond, you know, 50 years uh people take diamonds out of their grandmother's ring i'll clean it up it's brand new it's perfect okay all right so it's it's a lot more it's recyclable for a long time <laughs> okay it's for a long time right okay. i mean i that's the only word i can think of to use when, when you're talking about something like that re, so re recyclable or reusable reusable <laughs> i guess a diamond is forever <laughs> there you go. hey i've heard that before somewhere i like that okay well, well good so um one of the questions I was asking as far as the industry goes, is it you go from the mines to producers to store? Like, how, do, how, does, that, how does that chain go in, in the diamond? The diamond, well, like I said, it uh, starts with De Beers, buys out of the mines. So De Beers is a miner? No, no, no. De Beers uh, buys the rough out of the mines okay all right so that's their job is they control interest in all the mines and then they they buy whatever comes out okay and then they sell the rough well of course right cut diamonds don't come from mine they're rough diamonds that uh -huh. need to be cut and then they'll sell the rough okay okay and then that's how it comes down the chain site holder secondary market diamond dealers several diamond dealers i mean you know diamonds could pass through four or five hands of right. dealers mm -hmm. before it gets to uh, a retail store okay and is the beers the biggest i guess distributor of diamonds like that are they yeah yeah are they the only one there are other mines out there there's a mine in canada a mine in russia but they don't come close in the the amount of diamonds that are produced through De beers is there a country specifically that has the most mining diamond mining places in it is there any south africa is particularly known for that okay yeah. what about any other countries um uh, well uh, canada russia oh, canada. um and, and i'm sure there's smaller mines uh, throughout the throughout the world but uh, -huh. uh i'm not quite sure exactly what the other major ones that the beers is involved with is are diamonds and mining diamonds a lot like oil and that 
new patches of mines are found or, or around the world, or is it pretty much the mines that we have out there, the mines that there's going to be? I'm sure that there's a possibility of finding new mines. Uh, once they find a mine, I mean, they're huge. I mean, you can go online and, and Google diamond mine. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it starts in, uh, and then they create a hole and then they go down into the earth. Uh -huh. um, and these mines are, are so large. I mean, they have huge dump trucks that go in there, you know, excavating equipment. So yeah. it's not like, you know, the size of this room. It's the size of a city. Okay. Man. You know, they're huge. <clears throat> wow. I don't know they're that big. So that, that's when I think about diamonds, I just think about certain, only certain areas where you can get them. And I don't know if that's prevalent. Like if there's a, a ton of them, if there's just a few of them, as far as places you can mine diamonds, I mean, I, you know, I, that, I guess that's not, I that question. they're not really there until you find them. There you go. <laughs> well, and that's what I'm saying. Like, is it, don't somebody, dig a hole in your backyard, put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, can somebody be in South Africa and just discover one? Or is that like, is it, is it, is it just, is it a different kind of situation? You ever watch the show Gold Rush? Never. Uh. <laughs> See, that's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm, I just, when it comes to this kind of stuff, I, I just, I know nothing about it. So that's why. That's why I, I, I don't know these much about mining, but you, you know the, you know there's. You see uh, in the movies, the, the people out there like panning gold. Correct. You know, looking yes. for, so that's, that's in what a riverbed. Yeah. Okay. So some of the the runoff from some of those mines ends up in the riverbed because when when the diamond is formed it comes up through a huge uh eruption underneath the earth and okay. it forces those stones up to the surface okay and if it happened to be by a river then they'd be floating in the river well not floating but you know they'd be hanging out in the river if it yeah. happens to be five or ten or a hundred feet underground that's where they're they're going to be okay all right and you got in the diamond business just by chance right Pretty much. How did you get in the diamond business? <laughs> um, well, my wife's family is in the diamond business, okay. uh, and that's kind of right. how things happen. Oh, okay, okay. When you were talking earlier, I thought maybe you had come across some, some jewelry, some diamonds that you got hold of, and just were like, okay, this seems cool. Let's get into this. No, no, no. It's uh, a little bit more difficult than that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, that's... I, that's why I was asking. I yeah. just, I'm just curious to know. In case you want to open up your own that's store. That's right. Hey, you know what? Maybe I'll find mine. something and go, hey, <laughs> look what I got. I'm in the diamond business. We now. know where to find a wholesaler at. That's yeah. right. <laughs> there you go. So next, next portion, next segment I want to get into is the educational part, which for me is for, for guys like me out there, or even I guess for women out there, but I, probably mostly guys that just don't know what we're doing whenever we go buy a diamond. Um, okay because johnny's a little bit more because johnny's a little bit more of a shopper for that kind of stuff than i am sure, okay. but uh uh I, i'm not I, I could sit down in front of a mall retail store and your store or whatever and just yeah that looks great like you know because i just don't know that kind of stuff so um i, I guess it is I guess I'll start off with that. So what is the difference if I walk into a mall retail store or a store like, like what's the difference? Well, the, well there's a lot of differences. Um, I'll just talk about first product. The product okay. they have is pretty much going to be uh, price conscious. So they're going to be saying, oh, it's such a good deal. You're getting this for this price. So basically selling lower quality merchandise. The biggest difference is who's behind the counter that person working at Gordon's or Zales or Jared's, you know, might have taken a, a one week course or two week course on diamonds and now they're considered an expert. Or maybe they've taken more courses. Difference between anyone of those stores and myself is I'm in the market every day. I fight to get the best deals for the diamonds. So, and I know the stones. I hand pick every diamond that's in my showcase those people behind the counter don't have that experience. So when I pull out a stone, I know the history behind that diamond, why I bought that stone mm. and why I think it's a great value. All they're looking at is a card and a price. So I think, um, plus having said that, you know, my expertise, like I said, because I'm in the market and I have my money on the line when I buy the stones, I made mistakes in the past and I, I learned from it and I present that to the customer. So my okay. clients, I 
feel get the best value for what they're purchasing, no matter if it's a high or low quality. Well, and that seems like at the end of the day, it's a financial investment for you. So, right. cause you have to buy these up front. So you're actually putting your own money into the diamonds. So you don't want to buy a bunch of shit and then be stuck with a bunch of shit. Like, right. It's got to be the best value out there. And I fight hard. And, that's good uh, to know. It's, uh, cause it, I would think at the stores, it's just like, you know, whoever the store manager is or the owners are like, here, here's a hundred diamonds. These are the price points. Sell them. Basically, you get a commission. Basically. What you're doing is you're investing your own money into buying stones. So you need to make sure that it's high in its quality. And that's why you're going to have better diamonds in these stores. Oh, better value for sure. Cool. Good to know. Yeah, because I, I, well, from, and from what you're talking about, it sounds like to me it would be the difference between going and buying a suit, say, at like Dillard's or a place like that, and then going and buying a suit at a custom tailor. Right, right? exactly. Because they're building the suit. They're doing it like you're building, you're building it from the ground up pretty much, right? Well... From the, not, di- not, from the diamond right, to... Right, right. So, so I have the inventory, and, right. and I make sure that every stone in that inventory is the best value that you can find. Okay. And that's what I spend most of my time doing. Okay. So you spend most of your days looking for the product, right? It, it, it's... Uh, well, I'm in Houston. Uh, my suppliers are in Israel and Belgium uh, and India, so it's not like I'm doing that, but I'm... You know, when shipments come in, I'm making sure that what I choose out of that shipment is going to be the best value. So is that what you do? You bring them in, they ship you a bunch of diamonds, you hand select what you want and send the rest back? Well, I hand select what I want to argue over the price for a couple of days. (laughs) 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 And then I send the rest back. That's 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 pretty much right. So is there a lot of negotiation on your part with that? Like, is that, is, is that something where it's, it's pretty, pretty intense? Yes. It's it's part of the business. And when you're dealing in the numbers, like we're dealing in it, yeah, it's pretty intense. I can imagine that that's, I can't. I love to be in a fly on a wall. Listen to those kind of negotiations. I bet those are yeah, fun to well, listen to. Let's take, for example, if I, if I buy 20 one carat stones and I'm arguing because we're buying it price per carat. Okay. So let's say I make a hundred dollar per carat mistake. That's $2,000 out of my pocket. Mm. Okay. So that's what you're talking about on the value. I mean, the people um, that come get from you are getting the best value that they can possibly get. That's what I, that's my promise to my customers. That's good. That, that's, and then, so when you're speaking about carrots, let's go into carrots. I guess that's a good segue into okay. carrots. So carrot means, I just know that, okay, somebody says, this ring is this many carrots for a guy like me. I'm like, that's fantastic. I, I don't, <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what that means. So I do. What's, well, yeah, I'm, I'm sure you do. Yeah. Um, so what's, what, what's a carrot? What is it? mean like i just i don't know well uh a carrot is a a weight so when we uh talk about carrots we put the diamond on a scale and we weigh it it's 0.2 grams so one carrot is 0.2 grams um when you talk about a diamond ring of being two carrots now that's going to be the total weight of the entire ring so a lot of time it's the retail stores are a little um what's the word uh, misleading uh because you'll see on there uh one carrot diamond ring well, they come to me and they said, I want a one carat. Why is your one carat 2,500 and their one carat is 1,500? I look up the thing. Well, that's one carat total weight. That's a whole bunch of little diamonds broken up. The value is totally different. I got you. So, yeah. So that, that's a, basically what one carat diamond ring means or two carat diamond ring is the total amount of every stone in that ring. I never would have thought of that. It's Because that's what you think of. People say that certain carat, I'm not, I'm not thinking about the whole ring. I'm thinking about just the diamond part of that right well yeah not just the center stone yeah. so you choose with me you choose the center stone separately i tell you exactly the way to the center stone and the ring separately okay all right so when, whenever you have somebody that comes in and that wants to sit down with you and go over that do you have does someone come into a store like yours and have the jewelry cases and everything laid out or are you is it more like this gives examples of what we can do but people are more like customizing jewelry with you no, well, we have a showcase with over 700 engagement rings. They're, they're, the center stones are not in them, but everything on the ring is already, already set with uh, genuine, high-quality diamonds. That's the one thing that I don't, uh, 
uh, don't skimp on is the quality of the stones in the ring itself. Okay. Uh, you can choose whatever quality center stone you want to put in there, but you can rest assured that the diamonds in my pieces are, are, are really high end. Okay. So talk about places like these big box stores like Target, um, Walmart, Costco. When I walk through their locations and I see their Costco. jewelry. <laughs> Costco. I've the jewelry seen them business. at Costco. So what, what are... Is it, is it kind of what you're talking about in these retail stores in the mall, like Zales and, and those kind of places, or is it a different kind of deal? Well, all I can say is if you're walking into Target looking to buy diamonds, you're probably not my kind of client. It's probably someone looking for a $99 item or two ninety nine, and they sell a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, but particularly in, in the lower end category, they're not going to sell a five thousand dollar ring. Right. Uh, Costco does have uh, higher value merchandise, but again, it's basically just like you're picking the can of coffee off the shelf or the two cans of coffee combined off the shelf. Yeah. You're just pointing at the thing and reading the tag and give me this because the person behind the counter is really not not educated, especially to the degree that uh, we they're are. A, they're uh, a cashier. Basically. Yeah. Have you ever walked into a place, a retail store though, and do you ever kind of do any shopping yourself just to oh, see yeah. what's out there? Oh yeah. Have you ever walked into a store and had somebody talking to you and that you go, okay, this person knows what they're talking about or do you ever have that situation? Knows what they're talking about? Yeah. yeah. You've no. never been to a retail store where you've seen somebody. Do you like picking them apart? I, I mean, for example, I was at, uh, I don't know if I should say their name, Diamonds International. <laughs> <laughs> you don't was, want me to put that across the bottom <laughs> of the screen real big? <laughs> and they're known for the, uh, the tax-free stuff uh, mm -hmm. at the cruise ship terminal. So okay. as you go into a cruise port, they're all over the place. Um, so I walked in there and I said, you know, let's shop something that I, I can I can shop I, I can know the price by looking at it sure so i said diamond stud earrings i played dumb he went over there he said one carat i, I said well, give me one carat he says total weight or each i'm like well what's the difference so anyway he showed me the, the the thing and i take it out and i'm looking at it and i'm like these are pretty terrible quality it says on the card l i1 i2 well l your nearly colorless range is G-H-I and J. Your faint yellow is K-L-M-N. So they were in the faint color, and I could see that they're faint color. So I'm looking at him, he goes, yeah, those are nearly colorless. And I'm like, it's, <laughs> I almost forgot to say, it says right here, L. Yeah. <laughs> and he says, and they're SI3. It says right there, I1, I2. So, <clears throat> you know, how often does this happen? I, I don't know, but uh, it happened to me. All the time, I'm sure. I'm, I'm sure, because that person behind the counter is making commission. Yeah. You know, my job is not to make commission, is to earn your business and, you know, earn potentially your repeat and referral business. Okay. All right. So, what, do you... So tell me what it means, because like, again, I, whenever somebody has a diamond and they have that thing that they got up at their eye, what are they looking at when they do something like that? The inclusions or the imperfections that we briefly touched about, little tiny black specks, the carbon inclusions, the cracks in the stone, anything, any you know, birthmark or blemish in the diamond itself. Okay. Is, would that diminish anything like that would diminish the value of the diamond is that what they're looking for and basically and, okay right, right right so the the fewer inclusions the more rare the higher the quality and the higher the price so i can look at a stone for example a one carat i couldn't tell you if it's worth 3500 or 5500 until i picked up my loop now if it was a 1500 dollars one carat i can look at it and go yeah that's that's pretty low quality i could probably see the inclusions pretty obviously okay all right. And that's what the magnifying glass is for, to zoom into the diamond and see all the imperfections and, and know exactly what the value of it is. Yeah, exactly. And each stone is unique. So I'll show people a couple stones of the same quality. And when they look at them, they may prefer one over the other, mainly because the type of inclusion, whether it's black or it's white, the placement of the inclusion, if it's in the center of the stone or off to the side, and just the overall appearance. I mean, not... not if you have the two in front of you, you may choose the less expensive stone just because something about it you like, you prefer. Is there a, I don't know if this is the right way to say it, is there a better inclusion? Like There is. More I appealing. I can answer that. Oh, you can answer? Yes. Okay, more appealing, I guess, yes. Well, Laura's 
diamond has a feather in it. Is that what you call it? Right. A feather? A, it's a crack, basically. It's oh, clear. Well, okay. thanks. Cut that out. <laughs> <laughs> Piece of shit. <laughs> That's, that's good. See, we're putting we're putting Johnny on the spot. I like this. this Not bought by that Houston Diamond Outlet, by the way. <laughs> Getting and cracks it, in your stone, it, man. Bro. Am I fucking red? <laughs> Real red. Yes. Yeah. yeah looks y'all good. are gonna get me killed up in here. <laughs> so there's a feather in it, and it actually gave it character. Like we looked at a bunch of different stones. And a lot of them had different inclusions and some were cloudy and some had a bunch of specks. And this one just, it had what they called a feather, but it actually looked pretty fucking cool and it gave it a lot of character. And she actually liked that characteristic to it. Can you have an inclusion that can make it a pretty rare diamond? You could potentially have like a trap crystal of some other gem or something inside the stone. I don't think that that would actually increase the value, but maybe you might think it's cool. Okay. So um, I, I guess I guess the, the question I have in relation to the big box stores, the, the ones that you hear about a lot, Tiffany, Cartier, all these different really, what's, what's special about those places? Nothing. It's a brand. <laughs> no, that's, why, that's, that's good to know. That's you're, why I ask because, yeah, I mean, you, the, you hear about a Tiffany and a Cartier, like, you know, from a guy like me. I, I, it's the same mean? shit at Jared's. Is, same it is it stuff. Tiffany? Same stuff that I have. It's the same natural rock that comes out of the ground. They choose theirs to their specification. Maybe not the best value, but they don't care because they're charging you a fortune for it. Mm-hmm. And on the inside of the ring, it says Tiffany. But on the diamond, you take the diamond out of that Tiffany engraved ring, and it's the same as, as, as you get anywhere. And they get. I, I would assume their business is is great. I mean, for, well, it's, it's a brand, you know, yeah. you, you buy a, with them. You're paying for the box that it comes in that has the little logo on it. Yeah, basically. So you, you buy a, a leather handbag from coach is 400. You get it from Gucci well, or Gucci. Or it's 4,000. <laughs> it's the same leather, you know, yeah. it's just the name on it. Just the name. Okay. Are, are these places like what we were talking about earlier, Costco, Walmart, Target, are these, are these making any dip in the business as far as are, are they getting some traction are they do they do a lot of business well i would the walmarts and targets and things like that are you know really not in the engagement ring business and if they are it's the you know 199 299 type of type of things yeah um uh, you know anything that's online is going to be competitive mm-hmm. so you know, the internet has definitely stirred up the market. One of the reasons why I'm no longer selling uh, wholesale to smaller stores mm-hmm. is because I think in the future, whether it's one year, two year, five years, that the mom and pop store is not going to be able to compete in the diamond business just because there's too many dealers between De Beers and them and they're just not going to be cost effective. Okay. I guess that would go what we were talking about earlier about technology. I mean, is that the biggest, is that the biggest influence technology is having in the business is the internet? Oh, the internet really has uh, made a huge impact in the business. 20 years ago, uh, I was one of the first in downtown LA to, to have a website in the diamond district. And, um, the way that the wholesale industry used to go was someone would come to my counter and they'd say, I'm looking for two carat, three carat, this, that. I'd look at my inventory. Okay, I don't have that particular one. I'll call my friend upstairs and what do you got? And he may have it. If he doesn't, he says, I'll be down and give me 10 minutes. And he'll run around to his friends and try to get that stone to get it downstairs to me Mm -hmm. to sell to the customer. Well, now through uh, a different, you know, business to business websites, we all belong to a, a jeweler's community. So we post our diamonds online. So you'd walk in and I'd say, I don't have that. Hold on a second. I go on the computer. I'd look at that. And now there's some guy I never met before. Could be in Dallas, could be in Florida, could be in New York. That's got a stone he might be interested in. Whereas I would call my friend before, I'm mm-hmm. loyal to him because he would find me the stone. Now there's no loyalty. 
Okay. Now it's, it's all online. So, mm-hmm. you know, it really stirred things up. And with that online, buying diamonds online, how reliable is that? You know, because I know there's different, you can go to your website or there's some other websites. Um, whether it, I, I've seen them on eBay, Amazon, all over the place. You know, can you trust buying online these days or is it still better to go in person? Me personally, when I'm spending that much money, I want to go in person. I want to see it, touch it, fill it, put it on, all that good stuff. So I'm not buying a diamond online, me personally. Right. Ma- makes sense. Well, you brought up a couple different points. Um, uh, number one, eBay. Never buy a diamond on eBay. And the reason is 90 percent plus diamonds on eBay are what's called fracture filled or, or Yehuda treated or enhanced. So they have a big crack in the stone that reaches the surface that if you were to look at the stone, you would never buy because it got a big crack in it. You could, it's obvious. So through a special process, they uh, through heat and pressure, they force silicone into that crack. Wow. Mm. Now you can't see the crack anymore. It creates an optical illusion. So uh, great. You buy, if I were to show you this stone, one carat for $500, a big crack in it, you wouldn't bring it back to your wife mm-hmm. or girlfriend. No, she'd shank you. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, so they forced some silicone into it. Now they charge you $1,500 for it. Oh, wow. So now the problem with this is it's not permanent. So it comes out through heat, sunlight, uh, especially if you put it in an ultrasonic for cleaning or I do any work on your ring, I put a jeweler's torch on it, all that stuff comes out. So... Never fracture filled. So stay away from eBay. Stay away from eBay. eBay sells everything knockoff, ghetto. I don't know what it is about eBay, but everything on there is fracture filled. And every time someone called, I saw this on eBay, I said, look at the description. It either says clarity enhanced or enhanced clarity, or it'll say SI1 enhanced, or it's all BS and it's not. I think you're being taken advantage of if you don't know that up front. Okay. Um, the other things, what was the question? Amazon. Oh. You know, Amazon or, or just going to somebody's website. When you go to the website and they got the little sliders on there, you can pick your size, you can pick the cut, you know, the 10 different options you get to pick. You can pick it all, and it populates what they have in inventory. And our, when it says it's a VSI 2.2 carat, this clarity, this quality, and you hit buy now, is that really what you're going to get in the mail, or do you have to be scared that you might get something else? Well, human nature is such that you're, if you have 10 diamonds all priced, the, all the same quality, priced the same, so let's say it's a one carat G color SI2, okay? And you got 10 of them on the web, and most websites have like 50 of them. Mm-hmm. There's always going to be one that's priced the cheapest, and there's always going to be one that's priced the most expensive. Mm-hmm everyone's going to pick the cheapest one. They're sure. calling on the cheapest one. Well, what's the problem with the cheapest one? You can't, usually it's the type of inclusion, like you said, you got either a clear crack, you could have a black carbon in the center of the stone that's very obvious that the only way you can sell that stone is to sell it as, at a discount. But you're not seeing it in person. When you come to my office, I'll show you the stones in person. Mm -hmm. And I'll say, this is one sold at a discount because you see that little black dot? If you don't mind that, I can save you $1,000. Okay. And this is a little bit better. This is a little bit better until you get to the best one. So, no, not all diamonds are the same. Even though they're all the same quality, they're different birthmarks, different shine and sparkles. You know, when I look at stones... 10 one carat GSI twos, there might be one in there. I look at it and go, wow, this is a nice stone. And I'll price it a couple hundred dollars more. Mm -hmm. Maybe I made a mistake. If I show it to someone else, they may not think the same. Mm -hmm. You know, so no, all diamonds are not the same. Should not buy it off of a list. I can't buy diamonds off of a list. I get a list of what's coming into production or coming out of production that they're going to ship me. And based on the price, I'll know, don't even bother sending me this. It's going to be junk. I don't, I don't want to waste my time and money shipping it back. Uh, and if it's too expensive, it might look a little bit better, but, you know, it's my job to balance, you know, look and price. So uh, never buy off of a list. Or okay. am I, uh, for my opinion, I'll never buy online. Yeah, well, <laughs> if, you're gonna spend, if you're going to make the investment, go in person, go to the shop, see what you're buying. Right. So then what, what are synthetic diamonds? I, I, I've read that about synthetic diamonds. What are those? Okay, well, there's a couple type of uh, synthetic diamonds. Uh, 
Uh, Mosinite has been around for um, several years now. And basically that's made in a lab. It's uh, silic silicone carbide. So it's just some thing that they produce in the lab. Uh, they're, they're very hard. They look kind of like diamonds. If you don't know a lot about diamonds, you, you might not know the difference. They have a little bit different shine and sparkle, a little greenish uh, sparkle to them. Uh, they're very cheap. On Amazon, you can find a one carat for about 100 bucks. Wow. Um, the other diamonds that are fairly new in the market are called CVD, Chemical Vapor Disposition or Deposition. Mm. What they do is they, they uh, this is relatively new, uh, and it's grown in a lab. What they do is they'll take a seed, a little piece of a diamond, stick it in a, 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 a gas tank, uh, for lack of a better word, and then they'll pump methane and hydrogen in there. And methane, as you know, is a greenhouse gas, is wonderful for our, uh, our ozone layer. Uh, and then they high pressure, pressurize it. And then over, I think, a few weeks, that, that will start to grow into a diamond, uh, into a rough diamond. And then they cut it. Now, sounds great. It's a diamond. It came from a diamond. They're, the issue with, with those are, number one, it's not, you know, you talk about bad for our, uh, our ozone mm -hmm. and, and our environment. That's not the best thing to do. Number two, right now, they're not cost effective. So whereas, let's say, a one carat, uh, you know, might cost you four grand, for example, of a particular quality, mm -hmm. theirs might be 2500 So you're getting something that is not really natural and yeah. you're you're still paying a lot for it the third reason is the beers has already um agreed that they're going to flood the market with these things so they're just going to make a bunch of them and then they're going to flood the market so the value is going to go way down so what you buy this year for 2500 next year is going to be selling for 1500 in a couple of years it's going to be selling for 500 so you definitely don't want to buy one of those either okay i i so it's a diamond, it's just not a legit diamond. Yeah, not a legit diamond. If you knew how the diamond was formed, these things were a billion years old. I mean, the, the, the way that the thing is formed in the, in, in the crust and you know just reaches the surface f from these uh, volcanic eruptions, it has to be strategically placed and has to come at a certain uh, speed, otherwise it's gonna, it yeah. won't, uh, you know, grow into a diamond or go, go into something, graphite or something else. I mean, maybe that's a, uh, another s story for another sure. day, but yeah. it, it's, once you learn how a diamond is formed and reaches the surface, it's amazing. Cool. Are you ready for the grilling now, Jay? We're going to learn about you, buddy. You ready for this? <laughs> I already gave you the things we're not discussing, right? <laughs> <laughs> I wrote that list down. Well, you know what? I think I that's lost that list. Inches, I don't by know. the way. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, I think I lost that list, so I don't know where that went, but, uh, all right, so uh, I, I guess you kind of went into it when we first started, but tell me a little bit, kind of go a little bit more on how you got started uh, doing this thing. No, we just decided uh, one day, let's, uh, let's start it up, and uh, I went down there, signed the lease, and we started. Signed a lease on a, just on a spot on to a, start doing it? On a kiosk in the Diamond District of Los Angeles and uh, St. Vincent uh, Jewelry Plaza, and I had a little 8x8 eight eight booth, and that's how we started. So you said family business on your side or her side? On the wife's side. And uh, you can actually see a picture of me in the booth 20 years ago on the website on our About Us page. I want, I want a copy of that for sure. I think I saw that actually. I got on your website. I think I saw that. I may not have known what I was looking at. but Yeah, a much I, younger version <laughs> of this. <laughs> I think I saw it. So we're talking about your wife. So if, if you don't mind, you, you, you are married. And so tell us a little bit about your family. So uh, we've been married 26 years. We started right off the bat with the business. Uh, we have three daughters, mm -hmm. uh, 23, 21, and soon to be 13. Wow. I'm sure she's not letting me forget that <laughs> <laughs> because this is the month she turned 13. So, okay. Do um, the kids want yeah. diamonds on their birthdays? No. <laughs> they, they, they want iPhones. <laughs> <laughs> So it's like every kid then, I there guess. Apple, pro Apple products. <laughs> yeah, because that's, that, that's, that's like mine too. Well, that's a heck of a way to start a, a marriage is getting, a, getting business like that, right? Yeah, right away. You, you just went right into it. Right into it. Well, that's good. That's good. So it's a, it's a, part, it's a business partnership with you and your wife pretty Absolutely. much, Absolutely, right? yes. So how, how involved is she in the business? 
Oh man, when Maggie's all over the place. Geez. Really? Hey Maggie, yeah. how are you? Yeah, <laughs> we miss you, Maggie. Next time you're gonna be here next month when we do this. That's right. That's right. Yeah. She's the boss, huh? She's the boss. She's the boss. Yeah. Basically, yeah. I mean, when we first started, she was it. She, she was, was it. Thing, and and I was there. Okay. All right. So in this business, and you can speak just in, in your life if you want to, in general, or just in this business particular. What's been your biggest success? Do you feel like in the business? What, what's your thing that you put your flag on and you say, this, is, this has been my biggest part doing this industry? I mean, it's not, I don't think there's one big success. There's a lot of little successes. Okay. And every year is its own, own success. But I think uh, uh, being, um, foreseeing the, the future to some degree and, uh, you know, being the first one in downtown LA in the, in the diamond business to be, uh, online uh i was on ebay early um we left california when it was time to move uh we're you know we're developing the website uh now we're into social media and i think we're just trying to be a little bit ahead of everybody and i think that's one of the things that uh this uh, podcast is uh, going gonna prove okay so just being Fortune seeing, I guess, just right. seeing seeing what your future is going to hold and being being a step ahead of it. Yeah, about the industry, about where it's going and how, how to stay ahead. Okay, what what do you think's been your? If there has been, I'm sure there has been at some point. What do you think's been your biggest failure? That you learned from, of course. Yeah, that you learned from. I mean, that's what a failure is. A failure failure is a process that you're learning. So, like, what what happened that you said? Because we've talked like, about that. Like, did you lose a bag of diamonds one day, or actually, so just something uh, funny? Give us a story. Yeah, it doesn't have to be serious. Yeah, it's a- just actually, uh, we did get robbed uh, one time, and uh, we were at a trade show when I was being an idiot, and I left the diamond box where it shouldn't have been, and uh, they distracted us and they stole the box and it. Took us two years to pay it off. Wow. Wow. Two years. Yeah. Oh, so my God. Do you have insurance to cover you on something like that? At the time, I did not. I quickly realized that I needed <laughs> so insurance. That, so there you go. So, see, so there I was learned a, from that. You learned from that. There, there, there was a, there was I a got all the that you from. boxes yeah. tied up in chains and they're, uh, you know, tied to the showcase. But that, that was when we were doing uh, trade shows. So, yeah, it did happen. You don't do wow. trade shows anymore? No, not anymore. How long ago did you stop doing that? Uh, we were still doing it when we came here, uh, so maybe seven, eight years ago. Are those beneficial, do you think, trade shows? Well, it, you know, for, for us uh, as a, a growing business, a lot of it is uh, tur- turnover. Okay. Uh, it, it is turnover, so cash flow. Okay. So uh, we would take a bunch of stuff on consignment, uh-huh. take it to the show. In three days, we sell $100,000. We pay off the people that we needed to pay, and now I got a chunk of change. Okay. That I can buy some some more uh, merchandise or make some more merchandise so okay. that's a, a fast way to make money and and that's how uh, how we did it for about 15 years okay uh, it's nice to have those quick revenue streams oh absolutely yeah. okay well if you weren't i think we kind of talked about it when you first started in relation to the other things you like to do but if you weren't in diamonds what what else do you have any idea what else you'd be involved I'd be a in ufc fighter <laughs> <laughs> well, that's where I was hoping you would go with it, because I know that's what we were talking about. So, so expand on that a little bit. Tell us a little bit about your interest in that. Uh, well, you know, uh, I've always been uh, a fan of the UFC since, you know, 25 years ago. Now it's been. I used to watch them, and my wife hated it. And, uh, you know, as time has gone on, I, I've kind of gotten into the sport. Uh, I, I train a little bit here and there, and it's something that I enjoy, and it uh, definitely helps you know, with the uh, the frustration of oh sure, some of but the you're holding back because you're a badass, aren't you? Jujitsu at what a brown belt? Yeah, brown belt and jujitsu. Brown belt and jujitsu. You're a fucking badass. I don't know anything about jujitsu. Like you can fuck somebody up. Oh really? <laughs> yeah. Can you? Well, <laughs> <laughs> you're kind of the. I got to register these as concealed weapons. Well. It, if in the, the jujitsu world, the brown belt is, uh, I got. I'm not couple talking stripes I'm, and then black. So well, okay. ten and, years in to, our world, you're a badass. Yeah, yeah. You're to your average person, uh, yeah. So it's uh, 
Are you doing that? Is that something you're doing every day? Like when you do jujitsu, do you do that every day? I do wish you? my body cannot take the abuse. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. But I mean, you still do classes and do things like yeah, that. My, my goal is two to three times a week. Okay. All right. Is what, there, what gym do you go to? Uh, Third Coast that. MMA, up, okay. uh, Sugar Creek and uh, Sugarland. Cool. Okay. All right. Uh, well, Jason and Joe Solis, the professors over there. They're professors. Uh, y yes. You call them professor. <laughs> Why do you, what's, what's the professor for? Uh, well, because they're the teachers. They're, they're okay. more than a teacher. They're a professor. Both of them are, uh, okay. you know, Joe's over 30 years plus in, in MMA, and uh, his son Jason's uh, uh, actually a pro MMA fighter okay. as well as well-medaled uh, uh, jiu-jitsu player in the, in the country. Okay. okay. So that's Third Coast MMA over in the Sugar Creek area. That's correct. Give him a little shout-out. Yeah, there absolutely. You go. So in your process of developing this business, what have you, has there been anything specific or special you've learned about yourself doing this? I am patient. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Because uh, 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 a lot of times there's a lot of hand-holding. Like most people, like yourself, they don't know much about Diamond when they come in. Uh, the other part is I get those customers that they know more than me when they come in because they read uh, a couple articles <laughs> online and now they're now they're the expert. So you know I, I have to be patient and uh, either some people are, are not so and and I think that's one of my advantages because I, several times customers have come in and they said you know what you're so nice you know I'm like you you actually walked in somewhere and they weren't nice I just think they weren't patient. Yeah, you know they didn't know how to how to handle the frustration. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not a patient person. Well, then don't do diamonds. I'm, I won't. <laughs> <laughs> I in, in in my industry, like what we were talking about earlier in the in, in the car industry, I get the same thing. So I can understand how. Like, well, I was reading online and they said that this is the best way to do this. And right. You're just like, no, that's that's not the case at all. Right. And so probably doing a lot of education whenever you're talking to people. Yeah, a lot of it's, you know, half of what you read online is not true and, and half of the rest is inaccurate. And I have to kind of weed through that inaccurate um, things that people think that they know. And sometimes it takes a little bit longer. Okay. So what about you as far as in this, in this process, this conversation we're having, has there been anything that you've, that you've wanted to discuss or talk about? Any points that we haven't hit that you want to get across to people watching or any information you want to give, anything that, that you want to get out there? Uh, well, I, I'd like, to, there's a, a, a lot. And mm -hmm. um, just watch for episodes to come because uh, there's a lot to talk about, a lot of stuff, uh, interesting facts, you know, how diamonds are formed. Uh, uh, it's just a magical process. And I think if uh, people understand it and they're not they're just buying something that's a gift, but they're actually understanding what they're giving, uh, then it might be a little bit more romantic mm -hmm. than just, I'm just, buying a very expensive shiny rock with some little black specks in it. Well, sure? and I think that that's going to play into bringing Jay in in a couple of weeks for Valentine's Day. Uh, a lot of people buy jewelry and diamonds as gifts, and I'd like to get you in here, if that's all right with you, to discuss a little bit about what people should buy, what they should invest in, whether that's colors or shapes or what are good buys and not related to the Valentine's Day holiday. So if that's good with you i'd like to get you back in here in a couple of weeks to go over that sure yeah cool. for sure i mean I, I think this has been this has been educational i've learned a lot i, I know people that are probably in a position like me i, I hope they learned a lot because I, I i i knew a lot i love i know more now than i did before when we started so uh, i thank you for that to, to wrap up and review give us an so it's houston diamond outlet.com that's, that's the website okay where's your location we're on Richmond, about a mile and a half west of the Galleria. It's an eight-story glass building, so there's no signs out front. Uh, 6222 Richmond. We're on the second floor, suite 255. Okay. And phone number is 713-784-RING. That's right. 713-784-RING-7464. If you don't know how to spell it, ring on the telephone. <laughs> so, uh, HoustonDiamondOutlet.com, 713-784-RING. Jay. Thank you, man. I really appreciate it. I appreciate you coming out, boss. Fun. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Johnny, anything else? We're good to go. Let's okay. wrap it up. Hector, close it. Close shop, sir.